when did you first find out that NBC wanted to take Hairspray and put it on TV? I think I heard scuttlebutt that it was possible. <laughs> but then I saw it the same day as everybody did, the day it was announced. You oh, know, really? I got it online. You know, I mean, Seriously? I saw it. Yeah. I knew that there was an... I had heard that it was possible, but they really didn't tell anybody till the last minute. It was pretty much, uh, you know, each time I do hairspray, it gets a little further away. The Xerox gets a little, Does it? little dimmer. But they did ask me to do a cameo in this, but um, you know, and I wanted to because I played the Flasher in the second movie of it, so <laughs> I'm typecast already. But I couldn't do it because I'm in the middle of my Christmas tour. I'm going to have to tape it. I'm performing in Boulder the night of the night of You're it's on TV. So and it's live, so you can't get a oh, no, right, copy right, or anything. Right, right. So I'll be watching it after everybody the next morning. That is crazy. So when you say it's like Xerox, it gets uh, yeah. a little further away from you because I'm sure the very first time in 1988, right? Well, when I made the movie, movie. It was just me. It yeah, was yeah, your yeah. baby. It was all you. You you were you were the movie. Yeah, but still, the musical, I didn't write the music, and the music uh, was the best gift that's ever happened to me. The musical is yeah. the gift that never stops giving. You know, yeah. I always yeah. joke and say, I'm going to stop when it's hairspray on ice, but now I want hairspray <laughs> on space. That's what I want. That's when it will <laughs> finally stop. So... Um, I understand, you know, they want me involved, they want me, I'm the cheerleader for it, you know, I didn't write the music, uh, I think each time they've changed it, and that's why each time it's been a success, where actually the producers in Rent didn't do so well when they made the second movie because they just did the musical. Each time they changed it, I was an independent movie, then it was a big, brassy Broadway right. musical, then it was a giant, big budget Hollywood it, movie, exactly. and now it's going to be this live television event, which they've only done three times before, exactly. and each time was very successful. Yeah. So this will be different, and I know that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting trajectory for anything to, to make, and, and very flattering when you think about how many shows, how many movies or yeah. scripts could be that many incarnations of something and be successful and yet still be really current to people of today. I, I agree, and I'm not so sure that Hairspray isn't more current today than it was when it came out. Right. And, and uh, I always said Hairspray is a Trojan horse. It's as the same values as my most hideous movies, which are to exaggerate what society uses against you, turn it into a style, stick up for what you believe in, and win. Right. But Hairspray is a Trojan horse. It snuck in mid-America, and nobody noticed that was the message. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is really true, I suppose. Do you think, it's interesting, though, that something, in 1988, it was a period piece, even then. Oh, certainly it was, yeah. And, and today, here we are, all these many years later, it's still a period piece, but there's that thing in it that that people respond to and these characters that you have created. Still could it be a problem. Some things, so many things have gotten so much better. And at the same time, if teenagers still slow dance, which they do not, but suppose they did, would there be a show on local Baltimore television where black and white 14-year-old teenagers slow dance together? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure either. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Now, when you say you can't screw up hairspray, why do you think that's true? Because the message speaks to everybody. A fat girl stands for every outsider. It, the fat girl never wins in a movie, except now they do a lot. Yeah. When we made that movie, I mean, even Mary Lou, my great friend that was on the Buddy Dean show, well, the, she was actually kind of Amber in real life, and her mother really in some ways was Edna. <laughs> I mixed everything up. But she said... Uh, a black girl could have gotten on easier than a fat girl. No fat girls ever even applied. They, there was no movement to get fat girls on the Buddy yeah. Dean show. They were trying to integrate the show, mm -hmm. but no one was trying to get fat girls on. There was not a movement for large women. Today, they would be if that happened, which is good, and I think Hairspray did have a little something to do with it. Yeah, that is really yeah. lovely to hear. Why, are it, why is everything that you write and do set in Baltimore? Because it's a character Baltimore in my films. I do the geography first. If you see me out front of your house, I'm not an insurance man. I, I'm not a <laughs> repo man. I'm just got looking at your house and thinking up a character that lives there and something awful is going to happen. <laughs> so I, I think where they live first, I mean, we're in Hamden now. Pecker, the whole movie was shot around here. Right, and it's right. really, if you turn left, you would really go the right direction. And my producer, it doesn't matter. It's a movie. I said, it kind of matters. <laughs> It matters to you. <laughs> yeah, it matters to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah.